Oh my gosh, Brock, it's this morning? Yes. Oh, you I forgot? Sorry about that. Yes, I did forget. Um, okay, well, welcome to Joe Knows. I was just doing my, my lawn a little bit, so I forgot we were filming this morning. I apologize for that. But I'm so glad that you took the time to uh, join us in Joe Knows and got a couple of questions here, and you just get to be at my house hanging out with me. All right. First question, we're gonna do two today. You hear my dog barking and all kinds of things happening here. Uh, oh, Brock, thank you. Got a drink for me. Okay. Um, thanks a lot. Yeah. You're welcome. Question number one. Why do some people have dramatic, interesting testimonies and others have simple, less dramatic testimonies? Okay, so the answer is, the, the question is actually, why do we hear some people have these amazing things where they were about to die or they saw a light on the road to Damascus or you know they were into drugs and all kinds of things and God saved them out of that and other people not so much drama maybe they're raised in the church they become a Christian when they're four or five years old or seven or eight years old and why is there that distinction and I think probably the reason people ask this question is because we glamorize the dramatic and the interesting testimony and we think that the person that just kind of found Christ at a young age um, we don't we don't think that's very interesting and even though it might not be interesting well I think we're looking at this the wrong way first of all um, everyone is unique and everyone's different so you really don't want to compare and um, when it comes to the person that's had the the dramatic testimony maybe what you don't realize is the scars in that person's life from all the things that are so interesting to listen to and it's so nice to hear how God did all these great things in their lives but it's because they were in the dump and in the dirt and um, I think sometimes we glamorize that and it's usually because we don't know the pain involved and even the consequences that are experienced even after the fact. So I have a little bit of a dramatic testimony. I was about to end my life or kill my girlfriend. You've probably heard me say that if you know me very well. Um, but what you don't realize is I was in such a place so far from God and even to this day, I experience consequences from the sin that God forgave. Some people like the story, but that journey was painful and I still have marks on my body and marks on my life from those poor choices I made. The person that uh, doesn't have, this is stated, a simple, less dramatic testimony, that's a person that doesn't have those, those scars and that sin in their lives. It's also a person that gives glory to God concerning his ability to protect us, to preserve us, to keep us from evil. And you know, so a classic example in the Bible, the Apostle Paul. He said he was the worst of sinners. He was persecuting, even as a religious zealot, he was persecuting and even killing Christians. And he met the Lord on the road to Damascus. He was made blind. And you might know the story. He had this incredible turning around of his life. But, you know, we hear about Paul having a thorn in his flesh. So he was blinded on the road to Damascus for three days. He met the Lord and was blinded. But years later, we hear him talking about a thorn in his flesh, and many believe it was an aftermath, a consequence of the blindness that he actually went through. So uh, they're not quite as glamorous as they seem, but here's the deal. Accept whatever you... Oh, and by the way, that was Paul. Timothy was a young man who was raised in the faith by his mother and his grandmother and didn't have the dramatic testimony. Both right where God wanted them, both were used greatly by God, and I think it's really a good idea to, to embrace your story, and I embrace mine, and not compare ourselves to anyone else, okay? All right, so that's the first question. Second question is, this is a fun one. What does it mean when the Bible says, do not judge? So, I want to refer you to a passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 7, where Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus was talking about the fact that we should not judge. And he said, with the standard of measure that you measure it to others, it will be measured to you. So in other words, if you are judgmental towards people, you're gonna find people are gonna be judgmental towards you. Um, 
if you're gracious and merciful to people, then that standard will be handed back to you. And then Jesus talks about, now, now do not judge doesn't mean that we don't bring correction into people's lives. That's not what it means at all. What it means is when we correct people, we don't do it in a condescending, judgmental way. So Jesus uses this, this amazing parable. He said, if you see a speck in your brother's eye and you want to remove that speck, but you have a log in your eye, how can you remove a speck when you have a log in your eye? Now, Jesus is actually calling the log in his eye. He's The log in the person's eye is the judgmental spirit. The speck is, is whatever it is that you're trying to remove from that person's life. So he says, hey, listen, first take... He doesn't say leave the speck in your brother's eye. He says, first take the log, the judgmental spirit, out of your eye and then you can see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So he's not saying let people go in their sin, never speak to someone when they're doing wrong. He's saying don't, when you correct someone, when you bring correct, correction to a person, don't do it in a judgmental way. If you do, the analogy is that you got a log in your eye, a big log, and you're trying to take a speck out of someone else's eye. What Jesus is saying is the judgmental spirit in God's eyes is worse than whatever it is you're trying to help the other person to see that is wrong and correct. So um, the idea, so again, he says it doesn't mean we don't correct people, but we do it in a non-judgmental way. That's why Jesus said first, take the log out of your eye. He didn't say take the log out of your eye and then leave specks in people's eyes. He said take the log, judgmental spirit out, meet that person in a non-judgmental way, and then you can carefully gently lovingly remove a speck because i think if i'm about to take a speck brock is holding this camera brock if you had a speck in your eye you would not want me doing that with a log maybe with my eyes closed trying to take a speck out of that very delicate eye so we do it in a gentle way and then at the end of that passage jesus says something and it's very interesting he says do not cast your pearls before swine a pearl is a valuable um, I know it comes from the ocean. It's an, an irritation from an oyster, but I guess we would call it. It's not a jewel, but it's valuable, a pearl. He said, do not cast your pearls before swine. A swine is a pig. So you wouldn't take um, a necklace of pearls and put it around the neck of a pig. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, because a pig cannot appreciate the value of those pearls. So Jesus is saying, he's, this is an analogy about when to correct, when to approach someone with a speck in their eye and, and attempt to lovingly and gently remove it. He's saying, don't cast your pearls. Pearls would be wisdom. Don't give your wisdom to a swine, he's saying to a person that can't appreciate the value of those words. So here's what Jesus is saying. In life, you're going to see people that have issues and things that, that need to be dealt with. You're going to see it, and you need to be a loving brother or sister and help to remove those things. He calls them specks. He says, when you do it, don't do it in a judgmental way. Remove the log, the judgmental spirit, and from your eye, and then you can see clearly and remove those specks from other people's eyes. But then he says this, but there are certain people that can't appreciate the value of the correction that you want to bring to them. And to those people, don't cast your pearls, don't give that wisdom to a person who in the way a pig can't appreciate the value of a necklace of pearls, there are some people that can't appreciate the value of the wisdom that we share with them, we want to correct them. So don't approach that particular person. So I hope this helps you. And uh, I'm gonna get back to cutting my lawn and I'll talk to you soon.